What's up guys, welcome back to Thug Life Gaming. I'm your host Matt Rogers and you're watching the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Top 5 Pro Tips. Starting things off here guys is tip number one appropriately named stick and move in reference to a specific button layout for Black Ops 3. The purpose of this tip is to effectively utilize this button layout in two specific ways. But before we get into that head over into your controls menu and change your button layout into stick and move. What this does is it actually changes your right thumbstick to now be your jump button. This is important because what this allows you to do is actually aim at your opponent without taking a single finger off of any button. Now I know what you're thinking. You can also do that in bumper jumper. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. As you can see, the left bumper is now to jump. The problem with that is most people actually hold their controller with just one finger on the top left, which means when you go to press the left bumper, you're taking that finger off of the aim down sight trigger. But with the stick and move layout, you can actually jump, turn, aim down your sights, and fire all in one solid motion. Now, those two advantages that I was talking about allow you to thrust up into the air either around a corner or mid-fight against an enemy. This allows you to have the jump on your opponent. No pun intended. Now moving on, tip number two is a rather simple one that incorporates the trip mine piece of equipment. Now we all remember the old school Call of Duty Claymore that used to rack everybody up a few extra kills. But since then, explosives in general have just been nerfed quite a bit and Black Ops 3 is no exception. Now when I first started playing this game, I figured trip mines would get me a few extra points towards my score streak. So initially I was placing my trip mines on ground level, hoping that enemy opponents would walk by them and set them off. Well, I noticed I was getting way too many hit markers, so I got the idea to start placing them on the ceilings of a lot of high traffic locations. Once I started doing this, for whatever reason, I started receiving a lot more kills. So after studying this over the last month, I've noticed that in terms of height, if you place these trip mines above waist level, they seem to be a little bit more effective. Now, this is completely opinionated, of course. I recommend you try it for yourself, but even if you don't like utilizing these as traps, you can also use them as thrown explosives. It's this diversity that makes this piece of equipment extremely useful, but also an effective tool for pissing off the enemy team. Now, tip number three is where we start to get a little grimy. This is a trick that I call the Flankenstein. Now, for those of you that have watched a lot of my gameplay, you'll notice one specific strategy that I stick to about 24-7, and here's how to do it. What you want to do is keep on the outskirts of a map until you've worked your way behind the enemy team. Then bum rush them behind right through the middle of the map, killing any of them that you can. But once you've done this, rinse and repeat the process. Immediately make your way towards the outskirts of the map, but very quickly take a glance at your mini-map. 
Decide where you think the enemy team is going to be spawning based off the locations of your teammates. Obviously, they're going to be spawning on the opposite side of the map. From there, just simply work your way around them and again, come up from behind. Next up at number four is a very simple trick called the penguin slide. Now this is going to help prevent camping and if you happen to be watching this during the holiday season, this is especially going to come in handy when those Christmas noobs hop into some multiplayer. So what you want to do to pull this off is if you come to a doorway that you think an enemy opponent might be on the other side, instead of taking your time to aim through the doorway, which is what campers want you to do, instead hold down that crouch button while you're sprinting and slide through it. Then, use the last of your boost meter to jump up into the air, turning around, scanning the room for enemy opponents. The reason why this is so effective is just like a penguin gliding through the water and breaching the surface to hop up onto land, the sliding mechanic in this game is pretty damn fast, which ultimately makes it very difficult for campers to react in time. Now, you add the boost jump at the end of that, and that makes it even more difficult for the campers to stay aimed at you. Ultimately, this improves your chances of racking up that kill and embarrassing those Christmas noobs. So now for the last tip of the video, this one is going to incorporate your score streaks. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this one is a little bit more for the advanced players out there, but with some time and practice, anybody can use it. But the first thing I want you to do is head over to the score streaks portion of your menu and make the following three selections. The first one you choose is really kind of up to you because it's whatever streak that you feel is going to help you kind of get started, but the second two are very important. The second one you want to choose is going to be the Wraith. And the third one is going to be the robotic anti-personnel sentry drones. Now, I know what you're thinking. Matt, every time I call out the Wraith, it immediately gets shot down. Well, for this trick specifically, what I want you to do is once you've unlocked the Wraith, be patient. Trust in yourself that you have the skill in order to unlock the drones. And once you have, call out the drones first. Then, call out the Wraith. What this does is it causes one of two scenarios to happen. The enemy opponents are either trying to run from those balls of death and are getting killed by your wraith or they're trying to shoot down the wraith and getting killed by those balls of death. It's this chaotic deadly combination that when combined is no doubt going to boost your kill death ratio through the roof.
this ass, guys. Get back to boot camp. What's up guys? I hope you enjoyed all of the tips from this video, but real quick before we get out of here I want to give some recognition to you guys the fans So let's start things off with our fan spotlight this week's winner goes to YouTube user ultra shattic 456 because of how often he actually comments on all of my videos I always really appreciate your input and your feedback. So thank you, man You definitely deserve a shout out, but now let's find out who got the Thug of the week now, if you yourself want to get the Thug of the Week, or perhaps nominate one of your friends or family members, all you have to do is send me an email to thuglifegaming at yahoo.com letting me know what makes you a thug. This week's winner goes to Gamertag Devoe1013, who happens to be a father that's actually in the middle of a job career change, but is also somehow managing to spend quality time with his family. I think all of us can really appreciate that, because so often we get caught up in the work grind that we forget to spend some quality time with our loved ones. So thank you, man, for being a positive role model. You definitely are a thug. But that is it for this video, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to comment below, click that thumbs up button, share the video with your friends, and subscribe if you're digging the content. But I'll see everybody here in a couple of days. Keep living that life. Because that is what thugs do. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy.